you very much again for being with us with us today. Today, this um, presentation is called Success Case, Ecological Restoration of the Mangroves of El Payon, uh, the Biosphere Reserve Sian Khan. Dr. Jorge Herrera is our speaker today. Uh, thank you very much. And as Carlos mentioned, we're very happy to have the opportunity to watch this presentation and see Dr. Jorge Herrera Silveira today. During his career, he has focused on the ecological subjects, uh, health of critical habitat and restoration. Also, he has focused his research on water uh, quality, marine pasture, phytoplankton, mangroves, climate change, adaptation, reduction of vulnerability, and solutions based on nature, among other things. The doctor has also worked training and uh, helping coastal communities that participate in his projects, and he has more than 200 scientific publications. The doctor has directed 56 uh, a thesis and master's licentiate and doctorate, and he has received recognition for his work on behalf of the Mexican government and other organizations of civil society, as Pronatura, and for his leadership and contribution to knowledge and protection, restoration of the coastal wetlands and has a, um, a, an award of 2022 in his scientific research of the Mexican carbon program, and also his leadership in research in the coastal tropical wet and subtropical wetlands. Thank you very much for being with us today and uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much. And we also would like to tell you that you can follow these seminars through our social network, and you can also find today's uh, talk on the network. And um, doctor, you may start your presentation. Thank you very much. Good morning to all. And before uh, anything else, thank you very much for this opportunity of presenting this uh, work which is a work from many years back. And thank you, thank uh, very much to Marfan for the opportunity to be here with you today. Uh, can you uh, see my uh, complete screen? Yes. So this is the title of the presentation and Dr. Claudia Totley is here too, because she is the main writer of the manual for mangrove restoration. And she was one who started this whole process with the interest she showed in the restoration of mangroves. So the content of the presentation is basically what you see on the screen in general, uh, general context of the state of the mangroves. How did it start? How did the manual start and how we use the strategy of El Playon and the results, and where do we think this restoration is going? Some final considerations. So first I'd like to mention that the Caribbean has a very important extension of mangroves. 26% of the mangroves of the world are in Latin America and the Caribbean. These ecosystems are very important, but they are exposed to events like the weather, uh, um, uh, hydro weather events, climate change. We're in a time of very fast uh, climate changes that affect the, the ecosystems of Latin America are exposed to these. And we know the consequence. We can see the consequences here. However, The mangroves are impacted also by human activities. And these human impacts are firstly more severe in space 
and time. The majority of the impacts of, uh, on these mangroves are long-term impacts and a much larger um, impact uh, regarding space. So the threat in uh, Latin America of the mangroves are multiple, and some of them are the natural events, such as the change in the use of the soil or the land. Uh, and there's a lot of interest in restoring these ecosystems. However, even though there are platforms, uh, efforts for determine, determining the extension of the mangroves in the world, for example, in Mexico, there still is a, a gap of information that is very large. That is how many hectares are really available that actually need restoration. This is a, a topic that is very important. It, it is to really identify how much ex, how mu, uh, much mangrove area do we have. And so the work uh, lab group have esti uh, estimated about 40,000 hectares. And the official uh, Data are from 3,000 to 5,000 hectares. So there's a dis large discrepancy in numbers. So what is a positive uh, uh, thing that we can actually observe? There's an increase of restoration efforts. However, the negative aspect of this restoration is that it's not being done using technical foundations and, and or innovations and the restoration is in specific places. And this has been an experiment, basically, because each area needs a specific technical approach. So there are reforestation is the most common uh, hydrological rehabilitation, but without technical basis. In the case of Yucatan, we have some examples here of the restoration in Yucatan, where there has been very low success with very high cost which I have um, given some names here that uh, to these uh, attempts, and um, they have been actually fa they have failed. Why? Because the because it has been trial and error, or the procedure of making um, uh, uh, greenhouses and reforestation, nurseries and reforestation. The the fashion now as was called the resophoritis, which was reforesting with the red mangrove, and now is the canalitis fashion, which is making channels or canals, which have not really been successful in attaining a recovery objective for reforesting the mangrove. Why is this? Well, this is a something that Claudia, Claudia Tetley uses to show us that restoration has to be designed and by specialists. Good intentions are not enough. You have to be trained. And when I say trained, I mean that you have to have been in the field, have been with the communities, have been there for a long time, not just uh, six months or, or less. So what have we done? What we have, we started with basic research with physiology. The the CC has been in charge of this, and now with Dr. Diana Cisnero with hydrology, and we have had a team of modelers and technicals, and Dr. Tetley has made some very important contribution in the uh, um landscape uh, analysis and ecology. The development of the strategy, as you saw, as you can see, started in 2010 and continues. We are implementing now the pilot project since 2010, and we were training the people in the communities and engaging participation, social participation. So having this strategy that we had have already been able to implement in several sites, there was a, a workshop in 2019 organized in Guatemala 
where Dr. Totley makes made this presentation of a proposal of strategy, strategy proposal. And in 2019, in the conclusion, she mentions that the next step is to prepare a manual of mangrove restoration, a guideline and workshops. And so this is a dream. But uh, Mahon said, what do we need? So what do we need to actually be able to reach um, this product, to achieve this product? And during the pandemic, we have been working on this to be able to reach and achieve this product that was done with the collaboration of many, many institutions that helped us uh, reach and achieve this product. So the manual is not a, re a prescription. It's a guideline document. It's a reference document for a guide and development of restoration projects for restoring the mangroves. So now the idea is to share this strategy and how this takes us towards a successful restoration of a very important area in the Mexican Caribbean, which is called the Playón. Where is this site? The site is in the center of the Quintana Roo uh, coast. It has a very impacted area. And in the south, in the south, we also have the part that is called the Costa Maya, and also the important area we are showing you here, which is a, a World Heritage, Heritage Site of the UNESCO. And there are projects that are associated to this project that are uh, have are planning to open um, highways to take people to this area. This needs to be a different strategy than what has been done in the Mayan coast. The interest sites are in the Yucatan Peninsula, known as the Playón. There are about 500 hectares of mangrove aff affected, which was the result of a rustic road, not even uh, an important road, but this interrupted the hydrological flow of one part of the road to the other, as you can see in the image. And this affected, this road or dirt road affected the loss of mangroves in a great manner. What does this imply? And this is an image that the Dr. Cisneros included in her manual of how to restore carbon in restoration. When there's conservation, the mangrove re is a receptor and creates and promotes restoration. But when there's degradation, there is a liberation of carbon and collapse of, collapse of the soil because of the accumulation of organic matter accumulated. And many things are many activities are liberated. And one of the activities is the recovery of this topographical level. What are the what is the background of this area? Around 2005, an organization began reforestation, restoration, but there was 100% mortality done. In 29, 2009, there were studies done. There was a baseline where there were different restoration in processes with the Conant resources, which who were supporting these efforts. And there were a series of organizations supporting resources to this process. And uh, Actually, this restoration is not a short-term thing. It can be accelerated, however, with a good strategy. What is the strategy now and how it did it come about in El Playón? These are the six steps that I'm gonna dive into 
and are included in the strategy. The first step is the creation of a work group or task force, including communities, academics, professionals and implementers, and authorities and finance uh, entities or funders. These groups or this group is formed due to the interest of a specific need, but they all need training. There's workshops that are done regarding ecology, restoration and monitoring and mangroves. There's to theor theory, practice and delivery of materials to continue with training, ongoing training. Once the site's been identified and the objectives and goals or targets are identified, we can see here in the image there are two polygons identified with a Marfan collaboration. There are five hectare polygons. The goal is to reduce is the conservation and restoration of the mangrove and sites of dispersion. And I'm gonna be getting more into this topic. After this, we have to identify at least three areas or sites. One is the reference conserve conservation reference site, one that is a degraded reference site, which will help establish if measurements, restoration measures were effective and the restoration site. There are some sites that are affected by hurricanes and there are organizations who say they restore it. But what happens is it's just as a natural recovery of the mangrove. That is why we have to have a reference site. This forensics ecology measures three things, hydrology, vegetation, and soil. And here I wanna mention that mangroves are more than trees. Sometimes we believe that we have a more uh, forestry approach, forestry oriented approach, and we focus more on on bushes and, and trees, but mangroves are a wetland and there is a intricate connection with soil and water. And this forensic ecology helps us define what we're gonna restore, what, how we're gonna restore, what actions are gonna be implemented, when rest restoration is gonna happen, specific moments for each action, where restore, where to begin, and how much will this restoration cost? So this all means that thanks to forensic ecology, we have specific actions that are tailored to the specific restoration site. And this has been very useful for studies to determine the characteristics that determine the speed of recovery of soil hydrology and other components. Once we define this and we determine the specific needs, we are able to begin with restoration, restoration, whether it's hydrologic restoration, rehabilitation, topographic, or reforestation of areas of dispersion centers. When we talk about hydrological rehabilitation, we need to ensure the flow of water. There are natural channels that are enabled because they are uh, part of the natural flow of the, and they need to be rehabilitated. And also preferential flows and the natural flow of the water needs to be allowed. Also, in this case, in the Playon, there were some channels that were lost and the topography was, was, there were new channels that had need to be, had to be made 
because of the topography of the site and digital and preferential methods. This shows the brigade working in the channels. Over 5.5 kilometers of channels were, were dug. Then we have the topographical rehabilitation. And there were, there was a method implemented that uh, there's a, there's a different method here that we do we do in Mexico. This track structure is called Tarquinas, but the nom, name is called dispersion centers. There's also called Chinampas. It's not correct, however. This is a method. It's a cultivation method that was used in the center of Mexico and they float. Talquinas are not floating structures. They are anchored to the soil. In the case of Siancan, there are a number of these dispersion centers are clustered or designed through conglomerates and these grow and create wider areas of coverage. And we do reforest with different methods to, of propagation. We do not use greenhouses or nurseries. They're expensive. They require a, a mesh. They need to be irrigated. And some even add pesticides to, to these and it all leaks into the natural sources. And there are many affected consequences and they die. So what we do is direct transplantation of small of plants from areas of uh, collection centers directly to the, to the site. Monitoring is very important to know if we are doing well if we're not doing very well, what actions we need to reinforce. And this is all adaptive management at a short, medium, and long term. All these based on equipment, infrastructure, and training, which will all provide the indicators of success. We also train communities to be able to conduct basic monitoring of everything related to the growth of these plants. It's very basic knowledge and it's easy for them, for the communities to, to be able to, to manage this. The three components that are monitor are hydrology, vegetation and soil. And salinity recovery here we can see conservated areas, dispersion center, their regeneration areas. All these, we can see there will be recovery of salinity and hydrology. Another important indicator when we work in and is easy to measure is the redox potential recovery. This indicates the time of inundation or flooding of the site. If it's a wetland, it, it's true, it needs to be underwater, but water needs to flow. It cannot be uh, stagnant. It needs to flow. And there are substances that will be released if there is no flow and it needs to move. It needs to move horizontally, but as well vertically because of tide going up and down. When the tides flow in, there is vertical movement as well. And this allows re-oxygenation of the mangrove soil, which is favorable, favorable for the area. The recovery, another indicator, is mangrove vegetation recovery. It's one of the few indicators or variables that can be measured with a longer period of time because many of these 
projects are usually just the two, one to three years of projects and are not enough time to be able to prove if there is success in re vegetation recovery. As you can see here, this period is, a, is it, it, the recovery you can see here in El Playón is longer. There is also a recovery of degraded vegetation areas and there was a 60% increase of recovery. In the case of Tarquinas, there was a project where there were channels that were opened up, but there was a five year period and there is practically not much change seen with, in the time but when, we, when we conduct rehabilitation, hydrology and topographic recovery, we see this change in a year into three years and when we see error or the whole recovery together we can see 50 or oh, 53 percent recovery and we can gain vegetation and is now something that is helpful to be able to understand how much GHG emissions mitigation has been regulated. Soil is also recovering. In the higher image, there's a part of conservation of the mangrove, con completely cons conserved, one which has is degraded, and one which, which is in recovery. This line here is the amount of carbon that has been recovered in the soil and we can help this helps to estimate the recovery there are other methods as well but in within a year other uh, evaluations that have been done in this site is how the fish community can be restored or recovered and uh, dr daniel aseo has um, uh, had a master's um, study on this also insects and birds and uh, directed by Dr. Alaseo and also support by Dr. Luis Salma with Dr. Daniel Alceo also. Marfan has also had carried out visits to the restoration side. It is important that the organizations that support the restoration projects carry out to verification visits. And uh, often there are some very uh, good intentions, but um, some organizations do not uh, visit the sites and therefore they will not know if they're successful or not. And this is an example of organizations that do offer the support. We um, encourage them to please carry out these visitors, these visits and also to assure the success the linking and socialization of results. And this is a continuous activity. We have never stopped accompanying the communities. We, uh, in each project, we say we are marrying the community because we are constantly in dialogue. They consult us, we ask them questions. We are in constant communication with the communities. And also in the Playon, the it has this uh, communication has been very favorable this is a community that we have visited for and also has been in the activity for many years and is also now um implementing activities in the recovered areas and precisely one of the subjects that are very important is this dissemination of results we've seen the results and also with the support of Marfund and other organizations, we have been able to make this an informational booklet with, which we leave with the communities. And this is uh, something we have been talking about recently. And we have gathered all the results in these no booklets so the communities can consult the product. And it is very visual. There are very little writing, a lot of pictures, photos, and this has helped the communities to 
always be informed regarding the restoration. The lab where these restoration efforts have taking place are in the whole Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. We have also had some intervention and collaboration in the Mexican Pacific area. And now we're going to see if we have the opportunity to to cooperate in Central America um, with a UNESCO project of mangrove restoration and biosphere restoration. And we are hoping the, hoping to cooperate with them. The restoration strategy and ecological services. We are looking at sustainable livelihoods, promoting sustainable livelihoods that can um, support adaptation based on ecosystems that are associated with uh, mangrove recovery. This is something that's already being done, and the restoration has to be aligned to international goals. We are in the decade of restoration, but we're also in the decade of the oceans, and we have sustainable objectives in the background. This restoration can contribute also in this international context. So what and alternatives, economic alternative activities? Well, there are temporary jobs, ecotourism. There are some places it's a very, where ecotourism is very successful in the channels. We're also carrying out an experiment regarding honey production. Well, maybe you'll say, well, that's not new, but yes, the honey that uh, that has been, what we are doing now is uh, uh, talking about uh, work regarding honey production with women, groups of women. And what we are looking for is to generate income and also to increase the resilience of the communities and re decrease their vulnerability to climate change. So what are the next steps? On one hand, think about the benefit of the communities. We're evaluating the ecosystemical uh, services that are related to see what activities, what can be done in those sites, strengthening them, restoring them, maintaining training, communication, constant communication. In the case of El Playón, continuation to restoration uh, efforts, uh, uh, 400 hectares that also need to be intervened. Uh, and to finalize, I would like to, we need to increase the number of restoration projects in the wider Caribbean region, implement strategies that maximize the cost benefit relationship, incentivate synergy among the actors in the process of restoration. There are sites where more than one organization are intervening. We have to look for synergy. We also need to continue the strengthening the capacities of the local communities so that uh, in the areas of restoration. This activity, but we have um, observed that it actually favors appropriation of the site by local communities. So it's very important to continue this function of the ecosystems. Definitely, this is an opportunity that Marfund is giving us to make a call to protect the mangroves. It is cheaper to protect than to restore. When I say protect, it doesn't, it means not to just sit back, but also to actually see where you have to intervene. Do not, not wait until it collapses. Also promote articulation among the sectors to optimize efforts, to reduce duplicity, overlapping and failure. So I would like to thank my work group, Dr. Totley mainly, but also a series of collaborators that I'm not going to be able to mention every one of them, but, but among them are Maria Jose Gonzalez, because she believed in us and the whole group of 
and the whole group of Marfan who who believed in this manual, believed in us, members of the CONAM, Yadira Gomez, who has supported us a lot. The, and uh, she, the, the current uh, director, Almado, um, who has been a very important person for helping the efforts of restoration in Siakam, has been very aware very uh, aware of the coordination of the actions and also those who are developing projects with us and uh, uh, the CONAM people and uh, for giving us a space and also some other organizations like Ocean Foundations with Alejandra Navarrete, where we have a project with Escala, Fernando Secaira, who his uh, Nature Conservancy, who has believed in us, and Francisco Usua, who also has been key, both for uh, the Cancun and uh, Playon for the activities. A friend, a great friend that uh, may he rest in peace, Jaime Gonzalez Cano, with his direction in the Marine Park. He, supported us for the rest in the restoration effort so thank you very much and i am at your uh, disposal for any questions thank you very much doctor for your presentation we continue now with questions we have some questions already well, uh, there are several ways for you to ask questions. You can write them on the chat, on Zoom questions and answers. I don't know if there are any questions on Facebook yet. I Thank you very much, doctor. We have some questions in the Facebook chat. The first, they're asking us if you could please talk a little bit more about the subjects of why the mangroves are more than trees. Well, because one of the activities that has been used more for recovery of these ecosystem has been reforestation. Reforestation comes from an activity of the land ecosystems of the forests. And since the mangroves are more than trees, so we have trees. So you have to also pay attention to the water and the soil. And you have to know if the conditions of water and soil are favorable for reforestation. Then when I tell my students and uh, that when they go to a mangrove and they enter a mangrove, um, uh, what when we look at these wonderful plants that are monsters in terms of physiological and morphological um, uh, capacities well you have to turn around and look at the water and that will give you a lot of information you will learn a lot you will uh, learn a lot about that mangrove by looking at the water what we know about when we study a forest we uh, is something the result of the interaction of the variable of hydrology and soil. So the mangrove has a great plasticity. And um, it is true if you know, for example, the red mangrove, it, this is a mangrove that is a bonsai type man mangrove that could be 50 centimeters. And they are adults with a three cent centimeter anger. And in the case of the Gulf of Mexico, there are some 30 meters of this species with uh, uh, of, of this species. And so this plasticity is given being given the environmental conditions. So that's why we say the mangrove is more than just a tree. There's the water, the sediment, and the soil that are also involved. And they have, these three characteristics are very important. Can you see a question in the chat box? 
Pudiera Manuel dar... Chávez asking if you can give us your appreciation on the interaction of the Playón Mangrove with sargassum. Well, currently in El Playón, we don't have this problem of sargassum. It has not affected this area, mainly because it's a bay and the sargassum passes by and goes beyond this area to beaches towards the coastal area. However, the interaction uh, with sargassum comes when, because we need to remember the connectivity issue given by water. When it rains, water filtrates and goes through watersheds, whether it's by river or subterranean, and the final destination is the ocean. And before reaching the, the oceans, it go, passes through wetlands, mangroves, and marine grass, and then finally, the reef. One of the major issues in the reef is a disease originated by the poor water quality, and mangroves have a very important role to play in water quality. Therefore, where there, there's mangroves, they are helping with this water quality issue. And we have to think of these in environmental services and restoration. It's not only to restore, to see, but also how to reduce vulnerability. The approach has changed drastically in the last few years. And this requires ongoing investigation and research and implementation of projects in parallel. We cannot wait to start doing things, but we need to work in parallel or at the same time. Thank you, doctor. There is another question. What has it meant for you personally and professionally regarding the study of mangroves and what have been your greatest satisfactions and challenges. Wow, you want me to summarize 40 years of work in a few minutes? Well, this, what has this meant for me? This work has been meant, has meant to be able to take into practice something that many of us that are romantics in the field of nature to be able to put into practice something for this nature. The greatest satisfaction I have is having been interacting and continue interacting with communities. The satisfaction I feel is having friends along the coasts, all the coastal areas in the communities. That is one of the greatest pleasures or satisfactions I have to having taken what I love and like to study, put it into practice, but putting it into practice, I have been able to learn more from these communities. Even in the workshops, we talk, we mention that we're not there to teach them or things. We're going to learn together and formalize empirical knowledge, make it formal and learn from them because they're the ones that have been there for a long time, longer time, and they know things, many things. My research for many years have been dedicated to being in the field and in the communities because each site has been an experiment and a learning experience, which has enriched more my work than anything I would have been able to done on a lab, in a laboratory or working on basic ecology. But putting it into practice has been able to give, given me the satisfaction of having this romantic dream of doing something for nature. And everywhere we work, we have seen positive results. And there's com communities that are convinced that what they are doing is favorable for them and the future of their families. Thank you, Dr. Herrera. Two more questions. One question of Elisa Mulcai, Reefkeeper Belize, and is asking or making a comment 
that she is working on restoration in the protected area of Southwater Key Marine Reserve, working with school children and communities. And she shares with us a Facebook link of her project. And the other is a question by Artani de Leon asking for a manual for restoration of mangroves. There is no manual or handbook because hydrology is specific for each site. What I can tell you is that hydrology and channels all have to connect to something. In any of the slides, many of the slides you saw are beginning in one place and go to another, but channels are there to connect one thing to the other. That is why it's important to analyze these sites. And that's what we call forensic ecology. And this helps us define what work to do. In the case of channels, there is specific and actions. When I talked about the tendency to do channels, that was the need and everybody began to do channels because that was the tendency. But channels, do they need to be the same size, same depth, same shape? No, because it depends on the area, depends on, on the measurements. Some require two meters, some require 50 centimeters. 50 centimeters of depth is, is more than enough. So that's why it's important to evaluate and have received training. That's why we have to defend what I do. And it's not enough to just take one course and and take one year to do things. There are, it takes, this takes longer. That takes many years of restoration. That's why we work with communities to give them orientation and work with them and not do things for them. What we want is recovery of the sites. And we are going as a humanity to lose if we invest money and no recovery is seen, then we all lose. What we are interested is in, in, is in success. And that is why we offer our advisory and training. But sometimes we receive more requests for advisory outside of Mexico than within Mexico. That's why they say there's no profit in your land. Another question of Berceril Morales asks, in your experience and taking into account characteristics such as the mangrove is more resistant to exotic species and the speed of growth of individuals, etc., which ecosystem would be easier to restore? A terrestrial forest, rainforest, for example, or a mangrove forest? Thank you, and such an excellent talk. E easy does not exist. If not, anybody would do this. It doesn't, it's not a matter of easy or difficult. What is fundamental, and my recommendation, suggestion is to learn and understand the characteristics of the site because there that, that is how you implement a strategy adapted to the site according to the site there are sites where we begin restoration and which only re required hydrologic refor uh, re uh, regeneration and that helped for restoration in the case of El Playón, we had to implement three actions, basic actions, hydrology, hydrographics, and reforestation. And with this, we thought this was going to take a long time for recovery, but we were surprised that for us, this was a surprise. In a three, few years, three years, we saw over 50% of recovery, as you could see in my presentation, of veg vegetable uh, recovery. This was a surprise for us. We, we expected hydrology rehabilitation and then plants would start growing gradually, maintaining and six years. 
now we see this coverage. So this is not something about difficult or easy. It is the establishment of a strategy with adequate measures or actions, and things will it, it will be much easier. One, if you don't have basic knowledge of the site, then things will be difficult to recover. Thank you, doctor. And we have another question related to what you just explained here. There is a uh, greetings and does the water in the canals have any optimum salinity? Is brackish a good balance? There is no optimum salinity. Remember that the mangroves are subject to the filtration of water, salt water, and fresh water. And some parts of the year you're going to find that it's fresh water. In some parts of the year, it's more uh, salt, uh, salty water. So there are no averages. Re re forget about these ratios and there's its ranks and variability is what's important. What we have to understand is variability. What does this help, help us with? To have a reference site is important. That is why we always have to have a reference site, which will tell us the salini adequate salinity of the growth of the mangrove. And this is going to enable actions that are going to help us reach the variability of salinity. That's why it's important to have this reference site. We also want to mention that in the chat box, we're going to send uh, the strategy in the, in the handbook that uh, Dr. Jorge Herrera has and her team, his team has developed. There's one final comment by Kevin Kulo and is thanking for the invitation on the webinar. And we're very happy to be working conservation and taking care of the of these mangroves. And if there are no more questions or comments, we are five minutes before the hour. And we want to thank you, Dr. Jorge Herrera, for your presentation. It's a pleasure to hear you in your presentation today, all your experience. And we thank thank all the participants for joining us this this day with the conversation with Dr. Jorge Herrera. Thank you to all for your invitation and thanks to everybody that has contributed to this project, to this process, and, and thank all those interested in the topic of restoration of the system. Let's work so that we have to work together. As we can see that Marfund is an example and they have been doing an enormous effort to support the, the handbook and the restoration with the communities. And I want to thank you as well. Thank you. We want to remind you all that the presentation is going to be recorded, posted on the Marfan webpage on the video section. All the materials are going to be shared. If you want to share it, with all, if you want to gather specific information, you can you can go to this site. Thank you to Marfund and all the logistic team, logistical team that has been made made this effort possible. Have a great day, and remember, there will be future webinars that we're going to invite you to once a month and you will be receiving invitations to the following webinars. Thank you to all.